My name is Dave Swift and I want to make WordPress fun again. No, for real, this is my brand new WordPress series called What's Pressing. I'm going to focus on what's new and exciting in the WordPress ecosystem and leave all the tribalism and drama behind. Today, we're going to check out a brand new and very exciting plugin called Fluent Community. This is from one of my favorite developers, the WP Manage Ninja team. You probably know their other plugins, Fluent SMTP, Fluent CRM, Fluent Boards, Fluent Support. They've got a Fluent obsession and they are back with a Fluent community. All right, so here's the page and you're gonna see there's a ton of features packed into this tool. We've got a feed, which is kind of like a collection of all of the groups you're in where people are discussing things. It looks a lot like a Facebook feed, right? Then you've got your members down here. Of course, it's a community. It needs members by definition. You can't have a community without people in it. There is the spaces section. These are essentially like groups, right? You could replace the word spaces with groups and that would basically sum up what it is. We've got discussions right here. There's a little chat module you can enable if you'd like. There is a leaderboard. So you want to track who is most active in your community. You'll be able to do that. And didn't see this one coming courses. We can build full online courses right inside of Fluent Community. Now, the good news is I've got a WordPress website right here and I've already installed Fluent Community and I've been playing around with it for a while and I've got a lot to say about it. Overall, it's a very nice plugin, but it is lacking a few important things. So let's get into it. Let me show you around. Now, first up, we get the portal. Now, the portal is basically your community. I think they should relabel a lot of this tool just to make it easier for people to understand. The portal's a community. I wanna go to the community. Here I am. By the way, you can give your community a slug. I chose to call it community, but you could call it portal if you want. So here we are inside of the community. This is the feed right here where I can see everything that's going on across all of my different spaces or AKA groups. Now, obviously I know what they're trying to do here. They're trying to compete with school and circle and sound trendy and new and cool. But I think to just get people to understand what's going on, not using clever names would be the best scenario. All right, so in my feed, I see all of my spaces, all of the conversation that's going on. I did try a test post out here and you can see I wrote a little message as well as attached a photo. Then I went and replied to that and I even replied to that. And I found out there is only that level deep. So I guess like two levels deep of replies. And then the third reply just went in, in line with the second one. So there you go. If you're wondering what replies look like, it's pretty nice. The overall, the user interface, very, very nice. It, it looks good, right? You can't complain. Of course, we can heart, AKA like posts. I would like to have an option for switching that out. I wonder if there is one. I'll find out here in a bit. Maybe the thumbs up versus the heart. I think uh, some people have different feelings on what that is. I, this is what the world has come to. We're worried about thumbs up versus hearts. But uh, yeah, this is what it looks like. If we go to make a new post here, I'm gonna do that. We're at the top. The new post has a title, so my post. Then I write my message here and I can go ahead and attach an image like we saw before. I could also just put in a video. It's gonna take embeds from Vimeo, YouTube, Wistia, and more. All right, I've got a YouTube video here. One thing I noticed about their player is if I just press return, nothing happens, but if I click embed, it does. So maybe they could update that to just take a keyboard command. That'd be really nice. Now here's what the post looks like before I go ahead and submit it. It's got this red remove media button at the top. Kind of like, it makes me feel like I did something wrong. Like, hey, remove this media. Uh, but that's not what it means. It simply means that you can get rid of the media if you've changed your mind. It's as though like we didn't figure out that an X would do that, right? Uh, that would be better in my opinion. All right, before you post, like if I just hit post here, I'll get an error because I have to select a space to post in. Remember a space is a group. So you can't just post out into the ether like you can on Facebook. Instead, it has to go to a specific community. I mean, the whole thing is a community, but a subculture inside of the community. So I'm gonna post to this group here, say hello, and I will hit post. And there we go, this is what my post looks like. Now we could also create a poll just like you do over on Facebook or Twitter. And of course there is an emoji picker as well. Now, if you want to use Giphy for GIFs or GIFs, whatever you wanna call it, you can actually integrate with them directly. In order to do that, you have to go over here to settings and then you go over to features and add-ons and there is a Giphy module. It's disabled by default, but you can go ahead and turn this on and you have to actually connect up with their SDK. That's the way that these types of tools work. It's not just Fluent Community, every single community tool that's self-hosted, you always have to go ahead and set that up directly. 
And kudos to the Fluent Community team because they do have documentation ready to go for this to show you exactly what you need to do. So pretty easy to do so, but you do need to set up an account. It is free to do so on Giphy, but uh, yeah, go set up an account and you'll be able to post GIFs. Here's what it looks like, by the way. So after you get this all set up, when you go ahead and make a post, there will be a tiny little GIF icon down here, and then you'll get the picker that you're used to seeing on other platforms. By the way, most of the modules I'm showing you, you can disable. So if you don't like a specific part, like maybe you don't want emojis because you're like very professional and you don't like emojis, you can go ahead and disable that right over here. Just go to settings and then disable. Uh, save, now there's no more emojis and no more fun. Like how will you understand anyone's expressions if there's no emojis? All right, so that is the feed. Next, let's tackle an organizational thing, the spaces. This gets a little bit hairier, right? So under spaces, we've got two spaces right now. I've got say hello and I've got start here. But if you look over to the left-hand sidebar, we've got a group. And in this group, I've got say hello as well as a course. And then I've got another group called car talk and start here. So it turns out that your spaces can actually be put inside of groups, which they call group spaces. Are you confused yet? Oh, I am, because it's actually called space groups. We're going to space, man. Uh, that's what it sounds like, like we're gonna blast off. But uh, all right, so when I click on that, it takes me over into the portal settings, which is what we clicked on before, right? So in the settings down here, and there is space groups right here where you can organize your different groups. Now, in my opinion, this user interface looks really good, but it's lacking some key functionality. This should just be the place where you can configure your groups and your spaces. You can add new ones of both kinds and then move them around, but you actually can't. You can only add groups in this screen. So I'll add a new one. I'll call this one courses. Now we do need to add a slug in manually. Another thing they kind of just left out, like it should just automatically grab whatever is in the title and just complete that down here. And then give you the option to modify it. That would be the normal uh, kind of way things like this flow. And I'm gonna go ahead and just create this. Now I've got a third group. Now there's nothing inside of it. I can move these groups around. Remember groups are just folders, right? Spaces are groups and groups are folders. You'll get it, just play with it a little bit. Okay, and I can move them around, but what happens is all of my spaces stay inside of my groups. Whereas it would be nice if I could maybe move, but you can't, they're stuck. So if I try to put this one over here, they stay in the group that they're in. The way you actually move them is with the triple dots over here. You go to the triple dots and you can move the space from group to group. So if I wanna move this over to car talk, boom, it's moved. This really isn't as confusing as I'm making it seem. It's just, there's so much opportunity to make this smooth and beautiful and simple. And it's almost there. They just didn't quite hit the finish line. Okay, so those are spaces. Next up, we have courses. The courses look pretty good. Here is a course that I created. I can go inside of it. Um, it's in draft mode right now, so I can't actually mark anything complete, but here's what a lesson looks like. You can embed a video, same video embed that we saw in the post, by the way, so nothing really to see there. And we can have some lesson text underneath, and there's the option to enable or disable comments inside of a lesson. So I'll go ahead and reply here, and this is what discussion looks like inside of a course. Over on the right-hand sidebar, we can jump between the different lessons. I didn't put anything inside of the other lessons, but it's very easy to kind of create these little sections. That's what these are called. The sections hold the lessons. Let's just jump into the course builder and I'll show you. So to get into the course builder, you can't access that through this main screen here. You actually have to go down to settings and then there's a manage courses option down here and you click on manage and now you're inside of the course builder. Overall, it looks a lot like what we just went through in the space groups. And I'm sure you're going, oh God, he's gonna do it again. Yeah, I kind of am, because this one isn't as good as the last one, even though I complained about that. Here, I can move the lessons around, but I can't in any circumstance, let's say I had built out my entire course and I figured out, you know what? This lesson in module one really would work better in module two. I wanna move it, you can't, there's no way nothing uh it's just it doesn't move at all so if i go ahead and hit the triple dots there's no way to move the lesson it's stuck in module one you can't also duplicate any of these which sometimes is handy when you're building out courses if you just have like a video to swap out it'd be nice to be able to to duplicate it maybe the text stays the same or the download links stay the same no way to do that here so the course builder is decent like i can add in sections pretty quickly i'll call this one module three Return works there, by the way, which is a good thing to have. And I can add lessons to those sections. 
So I'm gonna add a lesson here. I'll call this lesson 10 and hit return, lesson 11. And you can see it's very easy to add in lessons to your modules or to your sections, but it's just not easy to move them around. All right, let's go into the edit lesson section here. And here's what it looks like. Kind of fooled me at first, to be honest. It looked, I was like, oh, they built their own editor. That's interesting. No, they just masked the Gutenberg builder. That's what this is down here. So if I wanted to add in some text, like this is my lesson. All right, this is Gutenberg. Like if I wanted to change this from a paragraph into a heading, boom, now it's obvious this is Gutenberg. Slash commands work. We can go ahead and you're not going to get third-party blocks in here, but you know most of the default WordPress ones you'll find, like you can add images and anything else you might need. I mean, this is a fine decision. I, I'm not surprised they use Gutenberg. I was mostly surprised when it looked like they had their own little text editor and I found out it wasn't, it is Gutenberg. But you know, we can embed our videos here and same kind of bug where I can't press return on the videos, but I can on this and now it's embedded and uh, I can edit my media up at the top. I'm not going to, I'm gonna hit save, take this out of draft, make it published. Over on the left, I can turn off the video. So I toggle that, it goes away. I can turn on and off our comments set the video length so people know what they're in for and hit save. So now here is what the layout of my course looks like. I've got modules one, two, and three. I can reorder them, but not move the lessons around individually. And if I wanted to publish my course, I go back out to the course section right here, set it to published. And there's a bunch of options here. Like you can do self-paced course, which is kind of what you are used to. You just go at your own pace. There's structured courses, which are dripped out. So if you sign up, then maybe you get access to the first round of lessons and then you wait a week and you get maybe more. Then there's also scheduled courses for live cohorts. If you're having a bunch of people take a course all together, you could do that right here. Pretty nice. All right, so I'm making this live right now. It's published and not to be too nitpicky, but one thing that's kind of missing here is a button to go to a live version of the course. Like you can't go from the course directly to see it on the live site. You got to go back out to home and then go over to courses and then you're there. Whereas in the rest of WordPress, you know, we're very used to seeing like a view page button and I'd love to see that built in. But anyway, now that the course is live, I can go ahead and enter in a lesson, complete a lesson. It'll get checked off and move you to the next one. There's also a focus mode over here. If I wanted to hide everything else, I can kind of make the rest of the community go away while I take my online course. That's a cool feature. All right, so that is courses. Next up is the member area. This isn't too exciting here. We can just see all the people who are joined in our community. Um, I did add in a badge for myself here so we can customize those. I'll show you that in a moment. See, as I hover over my name, it actually shows a little clip of my profile and give me a link. It actually shows up inside of the regular comments as well. Here's what my individual profile looks like inside of the members section. Pretty nice looking. I added in my own cover image here. I've got my own profile picture in here. This actually came from my WordPress profile. So that looks good. And overall, I can just see what I've done in the community. So I've got my recent activities over here. I've got my posts right here in this tab, the spaces that I'm a part of and any comments that I might've made. Those user badges I mentioned a minute ago where it says Supreme Pizza Lover. Uh, so those are located over here under features and add-ons. The user badges are right here. You can go into the settings and add in as many badges as you want. There are none turned on by default, so you have to add them in. But this could be something like moderator, instructor. You know, you don't have to be silly with it. You can, of course, be silly if that's right for your community, but that's up to you to figure out. So here's a badge. I can go ahead and give this a color. Now, it does say for best UI, keep the colors empty because it won't make everything so busy on the screen, but I'll just show you. Uh, kind of a weird thing here is that the picker doesn't display right. Like they're all red and I can't click any of them. This is early software, folks. It's okay. I'm not upset about it. Um, but then we can go ahead and choose our color here. I'll do this kind of orange color. Hit save. And this is what it'll look like. Uh, very small. And anytime you choose a color other than black, it's pretty hard to read. I mean, I'm sure some other dark colors will look fine too. But dark colors will definitely work best for the badges. There's really no way to like automatically assign those badges. By the way, you have to go back where we just were in the members section and then click on a profile. And when you edit the profile, which is right up here, you go down and there's a section here for badges where I can add in a badge. looks like you can only have one at the same time, which is, I don't know, not awesome. Like maybe someone's a moderator and an instructor and you want to indicate that. It seems like it should be possible. 
Now it's important to point out these are admin actions. So people can't choose these for themselves. Administrators will have to do it and they'll do it manually. There's no automation process. I can also mark the account as verified if I'd like. And now that it's verified, I do get a little check mark up here. Very, very official. Now, maybe you're thinking like, I'd like to charge for verification. I mean, Elon does it on X. I think even Mark's doing it on Facebook these days. But uh, yeah, there's no way to do any sort of charges with the native features that come with this tool. Yeah, so here are the docs and under monetization, we can monetize our spaces and monetize our courses. So these are gonna be very similar uh, directions. So first you have to set the space to private, which means it just won't be available to people who are not actually a member. And then you can set up a lock screen, which is basically like a message saying like, hey, you need to pay for this in order to get access to it. Then you'll set up a payment form using Fluent Forms, which will allow you to actually accept the payment, but we're not done yet. There is another step where we actually have to create the integration between Fluent Forms and Fluent CRM. You need to be using essentially their whole suite to take payments. And inside of that, you set up a list which essentially grants actions or grants access to the paid space. Boy, it sure would be nice if this was like, I don't know, just a Stripe pop-up and you could pay money. Like that would be easier. They gotta build that. I mean, honestly, that's a must have to monetize a community. Like we're not even done yet. You still have to then link the payment form to the lock screen and then turn on the automation. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a long process. It shouldn't be this hard. The team was so thoughtful with the rest of the plugin, the fact that it ever got this convoluted to say like we needed all three of these plugins in order to get someone to pay for the course. Well, I mean, they should have waited for the release, honestly, to have a better e-commerce solution. Okay, the last section to talk about is called the leaderboard. And this is where you can set up little awards for people who are very active in your community. They do give you some preset names like Space Initiate and Space Pathfinder and Space Enthusiast and everything starts with space and it's just not very helpful. Uh, you can modify all of these, so don't worry about that. Just go over to settings and then features and add-ons and leaderboards module right here. We can change them all. It'd be nice if they were just a bit more basic to begin with, like you know, contributor or something like that that was actually helpful and meaningful so you didn't have to figure everything out for yourself. They just gave you kind of like a nice boilerplate, but they're here and you can easily modify them if you want to. There's a bunch more features here, like we can add tags for topics so we can keep our conversations organized and there is menu settings. So you can go ahead and have these organized the way that you want. You can have a dark mode. This is a really nice feature that looks pretty good. Uh, I should probably have the option to have a dark mode logo. Let's find out if that exists. Oh yeah, here it is. We can set up a separate logo for dark mode. So that's cool. We can add in our OG image here for you know showing up on Facebook and other social media platforms. And let's switch out of dark mode here. And there is a customized colors option right here. If I click on this, it pops me over into another view where I can start to customize the look of the overall community. So we've got a few different presets here. The default one, it looks pretty good. There's also Sunset Sands, which uh, not my cup of tea, but maybe it works for you. We've got Ocean Blue, it looks very, very Facebooky with that blue color. Sky Blue, Emerald Essence, and you can, of course, customize it to be anything you like over here. There's a dark mode option here too, so you can have different colors in light mode and dark mode. Pretty nice. So here is Emerald Essence in dark mode. So yeah, that is Fluent Community, a very impressive undertaking, I want to point out, doing all of this inside of WordPress and having it feel so fast and beautiful. Really, really nice job to the WP Managed Ninja team. If you wanna check out this plugin, I've got a link down below. It's gonna be the best deal you're ever gonna get for this right now, so go ahead and check that out. And otherwise, let me know if you've got any questions or ideas for other WordPress topics you wanna to see some content created about. I'll be hanging out in the comments after the publishing of this video, so let me know, I'll see you there. Thanks for watching, my name is Dave, and I'll see you in the next review.